Okay, wow, the world is still reacting to the bombshell news of Ghislaine Maxwell being arrested. And to talk about this, the larger implications, even about some of the things that will be happening from here, we are very lucky to be joined by Sean Attawood. He is an investigator. He is a researcher. You've seen him on this channel many times talking about Ghislaine Maxwell. Holy cow, what's your reaction to all of this? Because, I mean, this is I, this is shocking. Absolutely, Luke. Thanks for having me back on, man. Good grief. Everything went quiet on the Epstein front. I, there was no breaking news for days. I'm thinking, what's happening? Then all of a sudden, bam, all the messages just start pouring in. So what's happened is we've got a 17-page, six-count indictment filed by the Manhattan U.S. attorney. You've got the six charges. The, the, the last two charges are perjury. And the four first charges are really serious, not just trafficking these kids for sex, but participating in the abuse of the kids, the sexual abuse of the kids in groups. So felony ones, I hope, because these carry life sentences. So she's now in the exact same position, if not worse than Epstein was when Epstein got arrested. And she presents the exact same liability now to the elites that had Epstein suicided to prevent the other co-conspirators from being harnessed into the court system. Yeah, this is huge. This is why a lot of people are saying that Prince Andrew just magically got his sweat glands back. We're going to talk about Prince Andrew in just a little bit. But another thing that's really important to bring up here, the charges that she's facing, I mean, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Sean, uh, she's facing life and, and potentially even more than life uh, for these crimes, which makes me ask, wasn't she just in, in Paris recently? Some lawyers are asking, why did she come back to Paris? Did she work out some kind of plea deal? I mean, what are the bigger implications that you're seeing here because holy cow i mean the, the the love i mean we we know the true story of the 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 epstein case we know how big this gets uh what are some of the implications that you're first paying attention to okay she absolutely did not surrender to justice all of the stories about galane maxwell being a in country a country b country c in and out burger all complete and utter bs to throw people off her trail she's an extremely calculating person I've got over 300 Epstein case videos on my YouTube channel. I recently interviewed Laura Gouldman, Ghislaine's friend, and tried to get inside Ghislaine's mind. And Laura Gouldman told me that Ghislaine believes that she is a victim of Epstein. She does not see herself as someone who needs to surrender. Because I said the best thing she could possibly do right now, the whole world are watching this case, is to negotiate her own surrender and cut a deal with the feds. But they have arrested her full force. She has not surrendered to justice. So, you know, this now comes down to presenting risk to people like the Clinton crime family, Wexner, Jean-Luc Brunel. Now, I was in an ecstasy trafficking case in Arizona. What happens is they order the co-conspirators in terms of priority. So at the head of this case, I mean, me and you know, there's an intelligence agency operation behind it. But just for the sake of the, what the public's being told and how the feds will do it, they'll have Epstein as the main co-conspirator, co-conspirator A. Then Max will be co-conspirator B. And then however they've got it on the chart at the prosecutor's office, they'll have like Wexner, Jean-Luc Brunel, Prince Andrew will be down there somewhere. And their theory is that if they arrest one, that person facing multiple life sentences will offer to cooperate to try and get out at some point. Then they're able to collect the rest of the predators into this net and they all fall down like dominoes. But certain people are a line that the prosecutors are not going to be allowed to cross. And I don't see the Clintons um, getting indicted. I don't see Prince Andrew ever spending a day in jail. But it'll be good to see the rest of the predators being brought to justice. Yeah, you brought up a very important point because there's many documentaries, there's a lot of you know mainstream media articles, and a lot of them keep forgetting the intelligence agency's connections. They keep forgetting about the mountains of evidence, the secret surveillance cameras, the video footage, the politicians, the extortion racket that, according to many sources, was being run here. I mean, do you think the chips could all fall here? And from your investigations, is she kind of just this sociopath that thinks she could get away with this? 
Yes, she has that arrogance about her, I believe. Speaking to you know Laura Goldman, um, she's just like from a different class of society than us normal human beings, and she thinks she is above the law. But that arrogance is about to be deflated very rapidly. Now, in terms of the intelligence agency apparatus, you know, when people become a liability, they let them go. Look what they did to Barry Seal. Barry Seal was taken out. Um, you know, he was a pilot for the CIA. What's gonna look what happened to Epstein? He was taken out. She has now become such a huge liability because the clamor, not just from the public, but from the victims. If you've watched Jeffrey Epstein Filthy Rich. It brought tears to my eyes seeing those victims in the courtroom saying that judge it was the first time he'd ever acknowledged them as a human being. So now what might happen next is I did a video a while back saying that Ghislaine could be used as a fall guy for Prince Andrew. And I still believe that could be the case. But there are ways she could still weasel out of this. She could cooperate and cut a deal. I don't think they'll let her weasel out of it completely, but they would give her a sentence reduction. The other thing is they could say to her, if this is so corrupt, it's all been organized behind the scenes, they will say to her, look, we're bringing you in. We're going to make a massive headline out of this. We're going to give you a huge sentence. But down the road, when you go to the appeals court and it's out of the public's memory, this sentence is going to be reduced. You're going to throw some of your wealth, an appeals court judge, you're going to buy the sentence down and we're going to let you out down the road. So there's all kinds of Machiavellian strategies that are employed in the legal system um, in, in cases of this magnitude because it's such a, a public uh, thing right now. And the public, you know, we've got the elections coming up. It's very politicized. Yes, uh, to, to say the least. And and again, her turning her you know, you know herself in, that's a theory out there. But uh, again, it's still not proven. We're still waiting for more information to come in. But the sociopathic kind of characterizations that you give her could explain uh, criminal defense lawyer Jonathan Turley, Turley expressing his surprise about why she came back to the United States after being relatively safe from Paris because Paris has a extradition agreement with the United States that prevents uh, French-born citizens to be extradited no matter what the charge is but now we also have Ghislaine's father that died under mysterious circumstances of course Epstein died under mysterious circumstances this is going to play out uh, I mean this is this is far beyond any kind of movie that we could even imagine playing out right in front of us and uh, I mean this is just crazy you've been on top of this uh, from the very beginning very few people have been you've been doing a lot of research and again some documentaries uh, produce just one tenth of what the research that you've done how do you kind of see this personally kind of unfolding from here uh, how do you see this going I know you explained the potential of her being her, her charge drop but uh, with the steps moving forward, what else should the general public know that they don't know about this case? All right, just a few things then on, on what you've just said. Um, we have produced our first ever documentary on my channel right now. It's called UK's Hidden Shadows. And part of that is our interview we did with Paul Page, exclusive interview with Prince Andrew's Royal Protection Officer. And he said that Prince Andrew was just so arrogant to the staff, effing and blinding and bossing them around, that Ghislaine Maxwell was allowed in the off the record multiple times. And if anyone held her up, he was like, F you, let her in. Don't you know who I am? This guy is an absolute arrogant a-hole as well. But he's not the brightest guy, as we saw from the BBC interview. So there is the theory that Ghislaine has a level of royal protection. And Ghislaine and Andrew go way back. Trump doesn't want to upset the apple cart of that Anglo-American establishment relationship. So if the royals do turn around and you know put some kind of plea in for clemency on her behalf, maybe that would be a way for her to get out of down the road as well. But she's not going to be getting out of this anytime soon because the public rage of this case and the bravery of the victims being so vociferous is so overwhelming. And all politicians care about is votes. They're going to satisfy the public on this one for the time being, I believe. And yeah, we really have to commend the courage of a lot of the victims here because there was thousands of them. There was thousands of children that were hurt in unspeakable ways, making it very difficult for people to come forward. As for now, three decades, close to three decades now, 
the federal authorities have been sitting on their butts. And I wanted to kind of ask you, do you try to trust the federal authorities here? Because I'm seeing all markers that we shouldn't. And then most importantly, what do you think of the news that just broke a couple days ago where we have the New York prosecutor that was investigating Jeffrey Epstein that was fired by William Barr? And according to the victim's lawyer, some of the victim's lawyers, specifically Spencer uh, Coven, this happened because he wanted to stop investigating Prince Andrew. What do you think of those kind of allegations made by uh, the lawyer of Epstein's victims that the federal authorities were backing down here? I mean, obviously, today kind of contradicts that a little bit. There's good and bad in every profession, but to rise to the top of a profession such as politics or law, you've got to be a complete and not a psychopath. So you've got psychopaths pitted against psychopaths at the top. They've all got their own political agendas. You know, they're egotistical. They're trying to gain more power and enhance their careers. And these games have been going on since the times of ancient Rome. So the way I look at the president is, you know, that's the Trump mafia. You had the Clinton mafia. You had the Bush mafia. And these people sometimes work together, like we saw the Clinton mafia and the Bush mafia work together to bring the cocaine into Arkansas to flood the country, to flood the inner cities, cause the crack epidemic. They got away with it. Clinton was awarded the White House. He played ball with the CIA. Um, but then you got you know, the Trump mafia coming in. And um, they've all got different players embedded in the same federal agencies because the Bushes and Clintons were there for so long, going back decades. They've got all kinds of people embedded in the feds in the CIA, in the courts, the judges. But then Trump comes in, he brings his people in, he's playing his games. So they're competing against each other and they all want to score points in the public eye while getting away with whatever diabolical schemes they can get away with behind the scenes. Sean, you brought up a very important point and, and that's the, just the kind of craziness and sociopathic behavior of a lot of people who just strive for power rather than of course doing the right things and look the other way especially because again this has been going on for so long and there's been very few people that have been actively researching investigating and exposing this i mean you talk about epstein on youtube you're going to get punished uh you're going to get shadow banned you're going to get censored you've been one of the few people out there that's been on this case so i can't thank you enough for all the hard work the research that you've been doing anything else you want to say about today this case and where can people find your work oh i just always really appreciate you having me on luke um you know my youtube channel if you stick the link in the description box people can find my work down there like i said over 300 videos on the epstein case i was a, the last person to interview maria farmer before the gag order came down two hour interview interviewed uri ben Manashi, who gives details the relationship of maxwell epstein going way back to robert maxwell like you mentioned he was taken out by intelligence after he was no no use to them interviewed um Ghislaine's friend so there's there's a lot of information on there um that, that people might not not be aware of and um, all my socials are just under my name and um, it's just such a great day and just again huge congratulations to the victims i urge people to go over on twitter and uh tweet maria farmer tweet virginia and congratulate them and follow them and, you know, it, it's such a massive day for them and may many more days like this come. Yeah, I mean, after working so hard for so many years tirelessly, I mean, I'm feeling ecstatic today. I could only imagine what you're feeling and I could only even imagine what the victims are, are feeling. Finally, a possibility that they may get justice for the crimes that were committed against them. Huge, important day. Sean, thank you so much for joining us on this very important day. Definitely check out Sean's channel. We're going to put it in the description so people could, of course, find it and click it on there. And of course, stay tuned for more. Real independent media here on wearechange.org.